Jessica, I want to read from your excellent piece today, which I found I needed at the right time. You write, despair is poison. It deadens people when the most important thing they could do is proceed with more drive and force and openness than they have before, which is why the work ahead is insisting on hope, behaving as if there is reason for hope, even if you feel, based on the ample available evidence, that there is not. How are you finding that right now? Well, I think part of what I was trying to write about today is I think there's a twinned responsibility today. And the first half of it is to really sit with exactly how cruel and punitive and unjust things are, to sit with the realization that they are going to get worse. And Clarence Thomas's concurrence made that explicitly clear. We have talked on the show before about how the message has often been sent to those of us who have been worried about exactly this outcome and those of us who have been upset about the erosion of abortion rights and access, even as Roe has stood, that we were needlessly distressed about this, that Roe was never really going to be overturned. I have gotten similar messages since the leaked draft of this decision, as I and Melissa and others have worried about the future of same-sex marriage, um, of contraceptive access, being told, no, no, those are never going to those are never going to go away. I've heard those messages today, despite Clarence Thomas's clarity on this. So the first task is to be really clear that that message that things are OK is an anesthetizing fantasy that we have been sold to, to create paralysis in us. This is bad. It's horrible. And it will get worse. The second conjoined responsibility is to not let that further paralyze us, to, in fact, Take the awfulness, the badness, the injustice, and, and remember that it is incumbent on us to not give in to despair or hopelessness, but instead to continue the work. As you said in your intro, we have an ample history in this country of both progress and regress. The fantasy that we were only going to move in one direction and that things were going to be okay was an absolute denial of the reality of the injustices and power imbalances that this country was built around. And it is our job, even living through the regress, especially living through the regress, to continue the fight to make things more just in the future, whether or not we live to see victories. It is incumbent on us, therefore, to use hope not as some feel-good measure, but as to regard it as a tactical necessity and a moral and civic responsibility to feel the hope and keep moving and keep fighting and keep organizing and to look for the people who have been doing it throughout while all the messages were everything's fine nothing's going to be overturned you're all being oh you're all overreacting you're all being hysterical no there have been people who have been doing the work of getting people who need abortion care reproductive health care on the ground through the erosions of roe for many decades and we should be looking to them now as a model looking to support their work fund their work and expand it in this next chapter 